Hey, this is Aaron Orlando reporting for RevelstokeMountaineer.com. It's the new year in 2020 and we're going to try and do a little bit more video here, backing up our stories to hopefully provide a little bit more voice uh, from some of the people who are the subjects of the story. And uh, um, this uh, video is going to be embedded in a story about uh, the, a new chapter in the Revelstoke Temporary Use uh, Shelter, which was planned for here. Uh, in the Revelstoke United Church, and I'm joined by Minister David Cook, uh, who was one of the one of several people involved in uh, getting it going. And it's uh, as reported in the story, this is embedded, and it's been paused for at least a year. So, hoping to get a little bit about more background from David and find out what's happening next. So, David, thanks for talking to me. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Yeah. Um, so background, uh, and maybe just some 101 on what was planned here. Uh, so, mm -hmm. what what was the idea? So the idea was to have a temporary winter shelter operating during the winter months, um, November 1st to March 31st, um, that would be open 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. for those who are in need of shelter during the winter months, which I'm sure you can appreciate given that there's currently, you know, over a meter of snow out mm -hmm. there and it seems to keep falling. Um, or last winter where it was so biting cold night after night. And so, um, you know, there was definitely seen a mm -hmm. necessity for this sort of program. So that's what was going to be in operation. BC Housing um, came up with the funds that they would um, provide to operate this. BC Housing always needs a local nonprofit organization to mm -hmm. work with to actually run the shelter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there was some. There was. It was in the the papers and the media. There was some problems. You guys needed to get a temporary use mm -hmm. uh, permit. Uh, the city didn't. The city's legislation really wasn't up to date. So they were trying to mm -hmm. update that. There was also a bit of miscommunication, like we're sort of near the start about just letting the neighbors know about what's going on. But um, uh, the long and the short is that it's not going to happen this year. What what's sort of preventing it from from going ahead? So there are a couple of issues that. Um, that came up. Um, as you say, um, one of the delays is with this updating of the city's bylaws to allow the temporary use permit. Mm -hmm. Another thing that came up was there are certain capital upgrades that needed to happen to this building to allow for safe use. Um, we've been proceeding with those. There's a new fire alarm system installed, but we would also mm -hmm. need fire protection doors, um, potentially a new fire escape. And so um, figuring out the regulations around those took a while and then it just kept getting pushed back and now, um, you know, if we need a new fire exit, it's not happening during the mm -hmm. winter because um, there's just too much snow outside. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the picture. So those are the two sort of parts of the picture mm -hmm. about why it was taking so long. And um, I guess, you know, with things like this, there's always the hope you always set a timeline mm -hmm. and hope to meet a certain deadline and things always go over. Mm -hmm. right? So um, I don't think there's any particular blame to be passed around for why mm -hmm. it's been delayed. I'm obviously um, distressed because it means that there are people out there on the street right now who um, are, are at risk because of, of the conditions. Um, but we're very hopeful for next year mm -hmm. as, you know, we, we have now more time to to settle these issues for the city to get the bylaws up to date and for us to complete the capital upgrades that need to happen. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Mary Ann Wade, who's the Director of Development Services with the City of Revelstoke, uh, mentioned to me when I was talking to her uh, the day before yesterday is sort of doing a needs and demand study. Revelstoke, you know, has homeless people. There mm -hmm. are some people that people see or people see periodically, but one of the discussions we often uh, have or people will say is there's not homeless people or how many of them are there or what mm -hmm. is the demand in terms of your involvement in this process what are you hearing about what the demand is and 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 who would access these services um well obviously as a nature of, of my work i come into contact with the people who would access this quite mm -hmm. regularly they come by the church for help um, mm -hmm. at the uh meeting of the committee of the whole where this was first discussed back in august um Someone asked, you know, where, where are they going now? Well, um, I, I wasn't able to stand up then um, because it was a full meeting. But, you know, they do come to us. They, mm -hmm. they find places to sleep, including um, 
including in the doors of churches um, mm -hmm. or underneath bridges, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so th there are people out there right now, and um, I couldn't give you an exact number because not all of them come mm -hmm. to us. The reality is, as far as I understand, there's been no formal study, mm -hmm. but there also hasn't been sort of the, um, the means to conduct a formal study. One of the things that it's worth keeping in mind for what we had planned for a temporary winter shelter is it would in fact be a pilot project. And through that, we would get a much better sense of who would access it because they would be accessing it. Mm -hmm. It would be a one year pilot project at the very least to get a sense of, okay, who's accessing it? Where are they coming from? What would they be doing otherwise? Um, and what exactly is the need? Mm -hmm. um, I think from the church's perspective, like from my perspective as a Christian minister is, even if it's just one person, they still need shelter. And I think e in your magazine, I saw this morning, there was a, uh, powerful picture um, on an article that Melissa wrote, I think, of, of one of the one person who does live in Revelstoke, mm -hmm. um, you know, just just being shown from behind as they, they cross a park. And it's like, mm -hmm. I, I think that's important because you get a, a picture of like, OK, this one person is a human being. Mm -hmm. He also needs shelter. And so that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, I'm, you know, my, per my personal way of looking at it is to um, want to resist playing a game of numbers. And it's like, it's a, mm -hmm. is, it, is a shelter only worth it if there's only two people? But, well, what about what those two people need? Mm -hmm. that's, that's another thing that, it, uh, that I understand about the temporary use shelter idea is that it would also be used for other things, like, for example, a highway closure or some sort of, a, mm -hmm. you know, highway issue. I know we've often, uh, several times since I've been here, they've had to open up the community center because of avalanche, mm -hmm. you know, closures go run for a few days and people are stranded, hotels are full, uh, those kinds of things. Well, we, w we wouldn't be for that specific purpose. Mm -hmm. One of the things like we had always um, said from the beginning was it was going to be a no barrier, very, very low barrier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, safety risk was the only thing that would keep you from being allowed to access the shelter. And it would be first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I have personally heard worries that this brings up as like, oh, it's going to be used by, you know, ski bums who didn't properly plan out a place to stay. Mm -hmm. um, Mm, not sure I can address this right now, but like, I, uh, yeah. again, to me, it's, um, but as you say, Revelstoke, you know, it's a unique town where we do have all these closures. We do have so many people who are, you know, effectively temporarily homeless because mm -hmm. of that. Um, they have the, op those people have the option of sleeping in their vehicles. We have a local population that doesn't have vehicles. And mm -hmm. so they don't have that option. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's all these variables to keep in mind. Um, and again, what, we're what we were proposing was always going to be a pilot whereby we would be able to see over the course of the year mm -hmm. what the reality was, mm -hmm. um, which, and we'd hopefully be able to see which concerns might be borne out and what might be, what other factors we might not have taken into account. Mm -hmm. And then been able to come back for the next year to say, okay, here's where we're at. Mm -hmm. Okay. So moving forward, um, the Revelstoke Women's Shelter Society was originally signed up to do administration of the contract, uh, but they have said they're no longer involved in, in the project uh, mm -hmm. due to, I, I believe their statement was just capacity issues, that kind of thing. What is the plan moving forward for the shelter as far as the Revelstoke mm -hmm. United Church is involved? So uh, we as an organization have expressed interest to BC Housing um, mm -hmm that we would like to take on administration of the project. Um, we do believe in the project. It's very much in line with the mission of the mm -hmm. church. It's something that, you know, we believe a church should be doing. Mm -hmm. it, um, helping others is part of our religious mandate, basically. Mm -hmm. And so um, we believed in the project and we really want to see it happen. We were also concerned about capacity issues, mm -hmm. but, um, I guess our point of view is we believe that capacity can be found. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there are a lot of passionate people in this community, people who are very supportive of this project. Mm -hmm. And 
I have no doubt that that many would come forward saying, "Hey, I want to be a part of this mm -hmm. okay. in some small way or another." Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we're at currently. We've expressed interest to BC Housing, and what I can say is, for the most part, they seem receptive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to ask one uh, last question, and then we should probably wrap it up mm -hmm. after that. Um, you know, one of the biggest snags with any sort of housing or homeless facility, um, or you even see it in like low income facilities, is often the immediate neighbors are concerned mm -hmm. about you know what the impact is going to be, and you know it it must be said that in, in you know in some you know parts of you know the interior, some of the towns, they have like really big problems and. I think you must have received some feedback from some of the neighbors who have those concerns. What about your specific proposal and what was proposed this year and what's going to be happening next year? What do you say when people come to you with those concerns? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that was a difficult question because you want people to feel heard in their concerns. Mm -hmm. I, I can't comment about specific um, I, I won't comment about you know specific people who have come to me or, mm. or their concerns. Um, I've heard neighbors who are also very very supportive yeah. as as well. It should be said, um, who recognize the need and have no problem with it in their backyard. Mm -hmm. um, that said, you know you you understand safety concerns. Um, I understand safety concerns, and and to me, like I acknowledge that. I also but I also want to. Um, um, you know, bring attention to things like, uh, what about the safety of the people who would ac actually access the shelter? It's um, well documented that when there's risk of violence um, concerning people who are experiencing homelessness, the risk mm -hmm. of violence is to them, mm -hmm. the people experiencing homelessness, not from them, mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, and so we're hoping for uh, to give a place to safety. Um, you know, I, I have heard comments saying, you know, this is a great idea, just why here? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think why not here? I think downtown core is actually an ideal place because we should be, you know, not engaging in ghettoization. When, mm -hmm. Maybe that's a harsh way to put it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's how I feel. It's like these are members of our community and we should be like considering them as dearly members of our community as, you know, business owners, as tourists, as, mm -hmm. um, and so they have a place in the downtown core mm -hmm. as well. Um, and I'm not quite sure what else to say other than we're a church. This is kind of what we do. Mm -hmm. okay. We're, we're located where we are. We're blessed with a very central location, but we're very dedicated to the idea of not just being a pretty building. Mm -hmm. um, we want to, you know, reach out to the community. We want to, again, we see our religious mandate as helping others in need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we'll use our building for that purpose and we'll use our resources for that purpose. Mm -hmm. David Cook mm -hmm. is the minister of the Revelstoke United Church. David, thank you for taking and the time to talk to me very today. Much, Anna. Yeah, thank you Anna. so much. Um, and uh, yeah, this, uh, if you're just watching this on uh, YouTube, which we're, where we'll be posting it, uh, we'll be publishing a story. Uh, uh, so this is done in conjunction with the story. So check it out on uh, revelstokemountaineer.com, probably publishing somewhere around January 8th or 9th, 2020. Thank you.